Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the third video in how to program in C Sharp. Today we are going to be making a simple calculator as I explain things such as declaring variables, uh, data types and variable initialization. So that's super awesome and, and we're going to lay the foundation today of pretty much every single program that you're ever going to write. Cool, so let's just get started by opening up Xamarin Studio. And uh, as you can see, I've written out the challenge from the last video. So let's just quickly go through this. I asked you to print out your uh, name and age, uh, then await some user input, then uh, print out your favorite color, and then again wait some uh, user input. So this is done by first making a console.write line, saying that my name is Espion and I am 17 years old. Then uh, I'm just telling the user here to press the spacebar to continue. Then I'm awaiting for a key. This can be any key, but it looks prettier with the spacebar. <laughs> and then uh, we write out uh, the favorite color. And uh, before that, I've put a back backslash n and uh, in the last video I kept saying um, reverse backslash it's of course just backslash or reverse dash if you want uh, which is going to make a new line so it's, we're just going to put some more space between them and then we're going to await some user input again so let's just try and run this program you can say, uh, see it says uh, my name and uh, my age and it says press space to continue and once I do that my favorite color appears Cool. So uh, let me just go ahead and delete that for now uh, because we're not going to be needing that. I just wanted to show you how things are done. Again, if you don't want to wait for the next video to uh, complete a challenge or if there's just something you don't can't get to work, uh, just please feel free to ask a question over at forum.brackies.com. There are so many people ready to answer your questions and I'm always here too. So um, it's the best place to get answers. Cool. So uh, let's go ahead and make our calculator. So what are we going to be needing? Well, for a calculator, we need to store some user input. So far, we've only been waiting for it and then not really used the user input for anything other than to uh, wait for it. Uh, so now we are just going to try and store this in a box, basically, what we call a variable. So what variables are, are basically uh, containers that you can put information and then access later, or maybe even change. I know this all sounds very abstract because these boxes come in different shapes, and uh, if the value you're trying to put in the box doesn't have the same shape, it's going to throw an error. And that's where data types come in. So I'm going to explain that in a sec. First, let me just show you the syntax for creating a variable. So for now, we're just going to type var, and then we're going to type the name of the variable. Uh, and in our case, this is going to be num1 for number one, but this can be anything you want, as long as it doesn't start with a number, I'm pretty sure. And uh, you can remember also that it's uh, that capitalization is, is, is important, it's case sensitive. And then we can simply type what we want this value to be. So we could type here, maybe we want this to start out at 10. This is where we could also put some user input instead, if we want the user to define what the variable is, is equal to. But we actually don't have to give it a number from the beginning. This uh, line here alone is not valid. And the reason why is because when we type var, it's just going to predict what type of variable it's going to be depending on what we equal it to. So if we equal it to 10, it knows that it's a number without decimal points. And that is what we in programming call an int or an integer. Um, so the var sign here basically just says that we don't want to tell it what the type is. We just want it to uh, find out itself once we uh, initialize it. Um, but that's not really good programming practice because that can throw lots of problems and it makes code harder to read. This is what it call, is called implicit variable declaration. What we can also do is, what, is what's called explicit variable de declaration, which is good to just get used to from the start. And that basically means that instead of typing var, we just directly type the type of variables that we want 
to uh, declare. So let's say that we want to make a number, but we don't already know that this is gonna uh, what this is gonna be equal to. Well, then we can simply type int for number without decimal points, and then we can delete this, and now it's actually completely valid. Va uh, actually completely valid. This is just the variable declaration. Then later we can take this num1 and we can equal it to let's say 20. And this is completely fine. Here we declare the variable and here we initialize it. I just want you to get familiar with some of these, these terms because I'm going to be using them a lot and uh, just try and re remember them for now and then later you can maybe use them on your own. So we're going to make a, a number one, but there are also other types of variables. This here, the data type, comes in many different shapes and forms. We also have what is called a float, which is basically a decimal point uh, number. So we are just going to call this uh, decimal point. Uh, and uh, we're going to equal this to, let's say, uh, 10.4. So that what you, that's what you do with floats. You do also sometimes see what is called a double, and that's basically just a float, but with more precision. Then we also have a, um, see here, we also have a bool, which is short for boolean, and that's basically a value, uh, a variable that can either be true or false. Just like you might know that computers are built up around zeros and ones, this value is basically the same, but instead of calling it 0 and 1, we just call it true and false. So this is just true or false, and it's going to be equal to true in this case. Then at last we have what is called a string. This is a string, and this is basically used for characters, sentences, uh, or words. If it's just one single character you need to store, you can type char instead. But we are just going to be using string most of the time. So this could be a sentence. And it's equal to hello world. So that's some examples for the different va uh, data types and their usage points. Now let's get uh, actually into how we can, can use this uh, to create our calculator. So first thing we're going to do is we're de going to declare the first value. Uh, then we're going to declare another one called number two. And now we're going to uh, tell the user that he should type some number. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have the user uh, type uh, a number for number one. And then we are going to have him type a number for number two and we're going to multiply them and print out the answer. So now we've declared the two variables, we can now initialize them using some user input. So we're going to type console.writeLine. Actually, let's just do write. And I'm going to show you why just in a sec here. So let's do console.write. And let's type, um, type a number to be multiplied like this and the reason why we use console.write instead of write line is because then we can have the number that is typed on the same line so when we then do console.read line here that number is going to appear right after this sentence but right now when we run the program you can see that we can type in a number and hit enter and it just closes. And it says here that the variable number one is declared but never used. And the same with number two. And that's because we have to actually tell it that we want the number one to equal this console.read line. So we're going to say number one equals console.read line. But this is going to throw us an error because the computer assumes that the console.read line is a string. Remember what a string is? A string is basically a sentence. It's a series of characters. 
And it does that because we it can both be a string or just a number or a float. It can be many types of variables inside of a string. So what we need to do is we need to convert this into a number. We need to tell it that we are expecting a number here and not a string. So to do this, we use the convert function. So we can type convert dot to int. And you can see that there are multiple different types of ints here. And just like we have float and double, there are multiple types of ints for precision, basically how long the integer, uh, the value, um, the number is going to be. And the default one is just 32. So we're just going to type 2 int 32. And then we're going to wrap this console.read line uh, in parentheses. So now, and I know this was a lot, now we've actually gone ahead and declared two variables. We've written out something to the console. We've stored uh, the uh, user input in the first value by converting it to a number from a string. So I know this was, was probably quite a lot, but if you can just at least type after me in the beginning here, then you might go ahead and understand it fully later. So when we now go ahead and hit play, we are not going to see anything change. Uh, we can go ahead and type 230. We're not going to see anything change, but we don't get this error up here. And we can now do things with this uh, value here, like double it or multiply it with another value, which we are going to go ahead and do. So now we are just going to do a console dot write again, and we're going to say type another number like this. And then we're going to say that number two equals convert dot two int 32. And inside of this, we're going to type console dot read line, just like the line up here. Oops, you need to put uh, open and close parentheses after the console.read line because remember that is a method. And whenever we call a method, we need um, we need parentheses. Cool. So now we should see this uh, error here disappear also, this warning. And we can go ahead and do something with these numbers. And what we can do is actually really simple. And you can get creative with this. We can say console.write line. And we can say uh, the result is like this. And when, then we do plus num1 times and simply use the star symbol here, num2. And when we close this off and hit play, type a number to be multiplied. I'm going to do 25. Type another number. I'm going to do two. And now it says very quickly that the number is 50. But remember, again, we always have to wait user input um, before uh, the console closes on Windows. So we're going to do console dot read key here so that it won't just quickly close on us. And now we can run through this and I promise you it will work this time. We can say 30 times maybe five is 150. So there you go. You've actually now made your first calculator, your first valid program that <laughs> that uh, the user can now interact with. So that was it on variables and how we use them and how to create basic functionality in a program. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you a second challenge here because so many of you loved the last one. Uh, so what I want you to do till next time is I want you to, uh, again, uh, type in, uh, write a program that will allow the user to uh, divide two numbers. And I'm just going to tell you that the division operator is a dash. So um, I want you to write a program where the user can divide two numbers. And whenever you print the result, I want you to print out not only the result, but also the two numbers that the um, user put in. Meaning that you should have a sentence that says, this number divided by this number 
is equal to and then the result. So I'm going to go ahead and let you figure out what, how you can do that. And then I'm going to show you in the next video, should you um, uh, find it difficult or, or anything. I know that this is all very new, uh, but I promise you that this almost becomes like a second language if you just practice it enough. It's hard for everyone in the beginning, but it won't stay that way. Cool, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.